Good football Monday, sports fans. How are you, Birds fans? You got to be living large because it's a top of the heap Monday here on Birds 365. You got your Mac and Mac guys, John McMullen and Jordy McDonald. Uh, J Mac, after the dominating 35 to 10 win against the Titans yesterday at Lincoln Financial Field, call it what you want a complete game, a 60 minute game, a check all the boxes game, <laughs> however you want to describe it. The Eagles delivered the one thing that the fan base may have been clinging to, that they're not the best team in the National Football League. And they put that all in the rear view mirror yesterday's effort. You would think. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's much argument anymore. This is the best team in football. Um, so, you know, does it mean all that much right now? Because it's not best of seven. It's not like the World Series. I, I mean, it, it, you know, we know in the NFL anybody can beat anybody practically on on one particular game day. But all you can do is is uh, evaluate what you see. And this is the best team in football, and it has been the best team in football for a long time. For whatever reason, there's certain people, some in the fan base. You know, there's a lot of people in the fan base who think they're great and they can't do anything wrong. But uh, you know. In the national media, there's a lot of people that don't believe in the Eagles when compared to whether it's Kansas City or, or Buffalo or even Cincinnati or whoever you want to throw in there. Um, they're they're wrong. I mean, this is the best team in football. And the most impressive part is, and, and, and the best example of this is, is last week versus this week, 363 rushing yards last week against Green Bay. Jalen Hurts is at 380 and counting when they when they call it and basically the mercy rule like it's little league and pull him from the football game seven yards away from his career high. So what do you want? I mean, they can they can do anything. They can beat you anyway. We haven't even talked about the defense. The defense in front wrecked this game. Um, the special teams, even you know, which is legitimately a concern. They were great yep. special teams wise. All of a sudden, Britton Covey, you know, Tennessee's got this really strong legged punter who out kicks his coverage. And all of a sudden, you see Britton Covey with some room. Um, and he's got the second most punt returned yards in any game this season in the entire NFL. Christian Ellis, who they elevate from the practice squad, by the way, they should have done that earlier. Uh, because, you know, he might be the special teams player they're looking for. Uh, he was great from basically the open and kickoff. Um, other than the penalties, uh, there's not much to complain about in this game. It's as close to I, – I always say, the, you know, the complete game, the so-called – it doesn't exist, but this is as close as you can get to the so-called mythical complete game. They they clicked they checked all the boxes yesterday and it was a sight to behold. Uh, we'll get into the whole penalty thing, which every time they took one that made you roll your eyes and shake your head, all they do is turn around and put up a twenty yard yeah, play the exactly. next play. They put it yeah. in the rear view mirror as soon as the flag was picked up by the official. Um, but it is it's it's a really feel good win for the Philadelphia Eagles. And yes, I know I get overly vexed by power rankings, which I readily admit mean nothing. It's a snapshot opinion, <clears throat> usually of only one person. Some of the media outlets use uh, a group Couple, to yeah. put their uh, power rankings together. If any outlet does not have the Philadelphia Eagles as number one team in the National Football League this week, they're going to have some questions to answer because I just don't possibly see how it can happen. If you want to talk about who's going to win the Super Bowl next year, that's a different conversation Yeah, because a lot of people, and I think rightfully so, can lean on, well, what have they done in the playoffs lately? Previous year's playoffs experience, we know Brady's Brady and San Francisco's been to two straight championship games and Kansas City goes to the Super Bowl all the time and the Bengals were in the Super Bowl last year. And we know all those things. And it's been a while since the Eagles won a playoff game. So that's legit if you're talking about the ability to win the Super Bowl at the end of the year. How you're playing this year outweighs all of that, but it doesn't dismiss all of that. Power rankings are only supposed to be about 
what you're doing this season. And the Philadelphia Eagles are 11 and one. The Kansas City Chiefs got beat yesterday by Cincinnati. So they've now got uh, three losses. The only team with two losses are the Vikings, who just were able to survive. Yeah, I, I nailed that game for you, Jody. I told you Mike White was going to throw the football all over the field. Um, he, he only dropped back to throw it 60 times. Yeah. Man, they are asking that guy to step in and do a lot. And they almost pulled it out. Berrios huh. got his hands on a pass in the end zone in the last minute of the game. He just couldn't come down with it. So the Jets almost did the Eagles a very big solid by giving the Vikings nah, their third think, loss. I don't think the, the Eagles are worried about the Vikings, nor should they be. Um, that team, yeah, they that that that's a weird team. I mean, they just give up yards and yards and yards and yards and then make a big play in the red zone. And then that's as my friend Bob Gross will laugh at me when I say that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. Uh, the Eagles, what they're doing is sustainable because they do everything. They do everything well, um, l- literally, on the offensive and defensive side of the football. I know people are going to, you, know, you got the Jonathan Gannon haters. I imagine they're going to be hiding today. But, um, you know, through. Uh, through the ten and one start, forget about eleven and one. This was a really, really impressive performance. But you know, statistically, contextually, compared against everybody else, they're good, um, and they're getting even better. Um, it's it's tough to find a a hole with this team other than the nitpicking, and you know, special teams continues to get better. Um, I think the 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 rushing uh, run support on defense is going to continue to get better now that you have Limbaugh Joseph and Jordan Davis. And you and I were talking on CBS last night. The Eagles didn't use many five-man fronts because every time they did, they were successful. And then they, they were second or, or third and long, then they could go to their four-man fronts. So Limbaugh only played 13 snaps, but they were a damn successful 13 snaps. And I think Jordan Davis was at six only. Um, now, part of that was also the the blowout nature. But they weren't going to get high numbers because every time they were on the field, they did their jobs. Um, Linball more, more so. But um, it's only going to get better down the stretch. And, and I imagine I, – yeah, I'm, I'm upset at myself, Jody, because I, I talked myself in the Tennessee win in this game – I had not picked any I had not picked the Eagles to lose a game this season. And I said I can't go 17 straight. So I'd looked and looked, who's got the potential to beat this team? And I, you know, I focused on this game much earlier and I, and I should have gotten off it obviously very very quickly. Um they're uh, they're just a good football team and Everything people say about Tennessee about being tough and physical is correct, but the Eagles are tough and physical too, and they took that as a slight. As Son Reddick even spoke about it, um, you know, people are talking. We're we're the ten and one team. They're coming to Philadelphia. People are talking about them like they're they they really took that to heart, and they really showed up, uh, on, especially on the defensive side of the football. Um, it, it, it's it's pretty impressive, and I you know I was here every day watching this team during the Super Bowl run. This team is better. It doesn't mean they're going to win the Super Bowl, as you pointed out, but this team is better, and it's not even that close, Jody. This team is significantly talented. better. Uh, I, if you're just talking about football talent, I certainly agree. This roster has got more talent than they showed it. In all aspects yesterday, offense, defense, special teams came as a surprise. Yes, Christian Ellis could have been here a couple of weeks ago, but they got him here. And sure enough, he steps right in and is making plays for him. All of a sudden, Britton Covey is getting major positive yardage on punt returns. So, yes, they did it all yesterday, and they should get a ton of credit for it. Starting with the QB. And again, yeah, John was good enough to hop on my CBS show last night, and you and I both agreed. And it's again, maybe it's uh, you got the eagle colored uh, glasses on, but I'll take my stand. I said last week, I thought that with the fact that Jalen Hurts had a better passer rating 
not quarterback rating, passer rating, which doesn't include the extra weapon that is that legs of Jalen Hurts, which is one of the best weapons in the National Football League. Just a better passer rating that I would have made him a slight choice over Patrick Mahomes for the MVP. If you check the betting market, it wasn't close. Jalen Hurts was second. Patrick Mahomes was less than even money. He was minus 150 to win 100 to win the MVP. Well, after the Eagle game was over, I got to watch the 4 o'clock action. And Patrick Mahomes got beat fair and square by the Cincinnati Bengals. He's got a thing he can't beat that Joe Burrow guy. He's now lost him in two big games in a row. Jalen Hurts did what he did yesterday. Complete dominant performance. Didn't need to run the football. Scored the one touchdown. Needed to sprint to the fine line. Did, but his running wasn't necessary tomorrow, uh, yesterday. Uh, and therefore, all right, well, let me just throw it for almost 400 yards. Johnny Mack, he right now, again, snapshot. Same thing as power rankings. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. Seven days from now, it's going to change again. And it could change again with the MVP status as well. I'm sorry if I got a vote to cast. Right now, the MVP of the National Football League for me is Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and I don't even think I have Eagles colored glasses. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm the first to say I didn't see this coming from Jalen Hurts, but he has been, he has been the MVP of this league. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, uh, to do what this team does from week to week. And again, I go back, it was the 1987 Raiders, the last team that run for 350 one week and then pass for 350 or more the next week. Um, this kind of versatility offensively is rare, very rare. Usually you have the identity of teams. Kansas City is a perfect example. Well, they throw the football. They're, you know, when Tyree Kill was there, Travis Kelsey, we know the explosiveness in Patrick Mahomes. They never had a great running attack. You know, people would say every once in a while, Clyde Edwards Hilaire would have a game or Jarek McKinnon recently, and now they're using that Pacheco kid or, or – I mean, they don't have a great running game. They've never had a great running game. They were all about throwing the football with Andy Reid. Um, this this kind of versatility is is rare, is very rare. Um, and again, that's why you got to go back thirty five years to 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 find that kind of dichotomy. And that's why you have to go back to nineteen forty eight to find an Eagles team that ran for. Uh, more than 363 yards. These are historic, historic numbers. And oh, by the way, the record. Now, I'm not one of those people that says wins and losses are quarterback stat because so much goes into winning an NFL game and you can lose it in so many different ways. It could be special teams. It could be um, uh, a tip football going the wrong way. But at, at some point, you also have to lean on the fact that this is this is the leader of the best team in football. Uh, and Kansas City's losing games. Not a lot, but they lose games. Buffalo, they don't lose a lot, but they lose games. This team's lost one game. One game. What more do you want the kid to do? Just because and – I, and I look at this because I think from a national perspective, The blowback against Jalen Hurts simply refers to, and I was in this category, but but where I'm different is I don't care if I'm wrong. I didn't think I didn't think this was coming. I didn't think there was any chance Jalen Hurts could ever play better than somebody like Patrick Mahomes. So what? I was wrong. Who cares? I'm on I'm on with you every day, Jody. I'm on the radio every single day. I give opinions in the moment. Guess what? They're often wrong. I was wrong about Jalen Hurts and and his ceiling as a player. I've seen it every day now. What more do these people want other than they don't want to admit they were wrong? That's the only thing I can come up with. And I was one of the few, the proud, those who praised Jalen Hurts' draft pick and uh, two years ago when the Eagles took him in the second round. But I can't sit here and go, oh, yeah, I had him as an MVP candidate this year coming in. No way. I thought he'd be improved. 
I thought those who gave him no chance to be better, you can't pr- improve accuracy, either you have it or you don't. His arm strength isn't good. Enough. I thought all of that was crap. I said his arm strength is fine, and you absolutely can improve your accuracy if you work hard enough and get the right players around, you got the right coaching, and he has done just that. So, yeah, I, I absolutely projected a much improved Jalen Hurts. MVP status? Yeah, no, I, I didn't add that. I don't know who the hell added anyone other than just blind loyalist Eagle fans who project their quarterback to be an MVP status player every single year. If you're that type of guy, more power to you. You're living in the moment this yeah. year, and uh, you could say, told you so, even though you could have told us so every single year. Uh, Hertz has just been stone-cold unbelievable. And yesterday's stat for me that I heard during the day, which, um, again, the word you use, historic, is right on point. 350 yards, three touchdown passes, and a touchdown run. The history of the Philadelphia Eagles, they've never had a quarterback do that in a game before. And that's exactly what Jalen Hurts did. Right now, he is doing absolutely everything. The team is doing absolutely everything, right? Give him a ton of credit. And you did mention this, too, and this should be fun uh, on our stream when I'm on WIP tonight. There are the JG detractors out there, the Jonathan Gannon detractors. The Philadelphia Eagles, I saw this stat in Ruben uh, Frank's column, his Monday's observation. The Philadelphia Eagles, I did not even realize this, have given up one touchdown in the second half of their last six games. Just think about that for a second. Six <clears throat> games, second half only, and altogether too often the game's been sitting in a in advance. It's it's on the line. Yesterday was blowout proportions and bench guys got to play. But all these other games were decided in the fourth quarter. Well, certainly in the second half and more of them in the fourth quarter than not, one touchdown. The bad angle taken by Reed Blankenship uh, uh, Watson off to the races for 63 yards by Green Bay last week is the only touchdown they've given up in the second half of their last six games. Johnny Mack, how do we complain about a defense like that? Yeah, I where, don't where, know. You're where, where do you come the off bar, complaining I mean. about that defense? I don't know. I, the only thing I can come up with is, you know, everyone says, and it's not just Philadelphia, but Philadelphia is very provincial. They they only care about their team. They don't pay attention to other teams. Uh, they don't see what other teams are doing on a week-to-week basis. They don't comp against um, current teams, which you should always do. They comp against – Buddy Ryan and Jim Johnson in this, uh, you know, old school mentality where the game was different. The game was played differently. Um, in the in the 2022 20, uh, NFL, the Eagles played defense as well as anybody or as close to anybody, uh, at least in the entire NFL. And it has been that way for the vast majority of the year. Now, there are certain games – Week one, um, there are certain games where you get gashed, but you're a Jets guy, so I'll bring that up. You see how easy it is to throw the football against good teams. You know, that's a 10-2 and two team. Mike White, who started how many games, Jody? I, I don't know. How many games his in his career. career? Five? He's throwing it all over the lot like he's, you know, uh, uh, Dan Fouts in his prime. Um it's hard to play defense in the modern NFL and the Eagles do it better than just about anybody and why it's not recognized. I don't know. I because there's this lack of understanding of what the rest of the league does. That's, that's the only thing I can come up with. Yeah. I know from time to time you said you don't like the fact that uh, there's, one way that most teams are playing defense in the National Football League. Well, there's a reason for it. You just say that's what you got to do. The way yeah. the rules play, the way the game has evolved and changed. Yeah, the, the the Fangio defense is the one that works, and that's why as many teams uh, as are playing it right now are. The Eagles are playing it as well, if not better, than anybody else on that side of the ball these days in the NFL. All right, John McMullen, Jerry McDonald, your Mac and Mac, Birds 365 uh, guys. After the Eagles established themselves as the best team in the National Football League, 
John and I both think they'd already done that, but now there is no question about it with their win yesterday, the way they played, and the fact that the Chiefs got beat. It's not even a debate anymore. Uh, or is it? We'll find out. Because our very own Darth Vader is scheduled to join <laughs> us next. Uh, Bob Groats is guest number one. He joins us next here on Birds 365. 